Right, good evening and thanks for clicking on to the Tuesday edition of Vogan's European Outlook. Hope everybody is well wherever you are this evening. Be sure to hit that like button, share with your friends and family and subscribe if you haven't already done so. In today's video, I want to start off by looking at the Southern Oscillation Index, which is a atmospheric response to the sea surface temperatures within the equatorial Pacific Ocean. So the stronger the negative Number is this is a measure of a uh, atmospheric pressure between Darwin in Australia and Tahiti in the South Pacific. When the atmosphere is in a firm negative territory within these values, it represents an El Nino base state. When it is firmly positive, it represents a La Nina base state. Now, if we look first and foremost at the current sea surface temperature profile within the global oceans. We have got very warm Atlantic with a cold off the east coast of North America. That also is not a particularly great signal if you do not want to see uh, a, a very active, if not hyperactive, hurricane season. When you cool the waters in the eastern equatorial Pacific, you've got a very warm bathtub level, record breaking warm uh, tropical Atlantic. And you've also got cold waters to the north of that. That almost creates even more of an incubation region within the main development region in combination with the uh, cooling of the eastern equatorial Pacific. We've also got cold waters off the west coast of the, the United States as well, if you notice. But these cold waters now are starting to show up at the surface. We've got a lot of cold water subsurface, but we are now starting to see that cold water below the surface rise to the surface and there is your uh, your signal for La Nina. We've also got a very uniform warm Indian Ocean at the moment here which is quite interesting. We'll talk about that in a, in a second also. But uh, you notice here that the atmosphere was very reflective of, of El Nino actually. Even though we're starting to see the uh, conditions become neutral within the equatorial eastern Pacific which means that we've not got either an El Nino or a La Nina, so we've got the quick demise of the El Nino. And there's always a lag time, whether it be the MJO, whether it be the stratospheric polar vortex, whether it be the, the response of El Nino or La Nina, there's always a lag time between ocean and atmosphere. And that is definitely shown to be the case with this demise of El Nino and rise of La Nina. You notice here towards the end of last month, we actually had numbers down towards minus 16, minus 15, minus 14. These are very low values, which mean that the atmosphere is very much El Nino-like at the moment. Uh, we did see a, a lift up towards the neutral line, if you notice here. So it went from minus 15, minus 14, all the way up to uh, pretty much zero. And then we started to see it dropping back into negative territory. Then we've seen on the 1st of May, we actually had plus 6.53. Um, and we continue to see this kind of slight fluctuation between these positive, which represent more uh, La Nina uh, response to the oceans compared to El Nino. But notice here that, you know, between the 10th and the 12th of May, we had a drop back to 13, uh, minus 13, minus 10, which means that the atmosphere is kind of fighting with the, the cooling of the waters in the eastern equatorial Pacific. And what happens here is that it's going to take time. We are eventually going to see those waters within the eastern equatorial Pacific cool off to the point where they go below minus 0 0.5 degrees Celsius. Uh, and that means that will constitute a La Nina but there has to be a half a degree below average for a three month period to actually constitute uh, a La Nina itself. If you look here at the NMME model we see here that for the month of May it's in indicating those waters uh, cooling within the equatorial Pacific. Then we see it increase more in June, furthermore in July and then as we move into August, September the heart of the, the Atlantic hurricane season, we should have a fully fledged La Nina within the eastern and central portion of the, the, the Pacific Ocean. And then we should start to see those SOI values really start to go into double figures above 
the zero line and that would mean that the atmosphere is responding to the cooling waters of the eastern equatorial pacific so it's going to take time and the reason why i'm showing you this is because the big question is how what what influence is this eventually going to have on our weather up here in western europe here so it, it really does depend Obviously, the eastern equatorial Pacific is a long way from here, so therefore it takes longer for the atmospheric response to kick in, given how far away we are from the, the source region of this cooling waters in the eastern equatorial Pacific. So the big question is, when you do get the transition from El Nino to La Nina, the quicker that transition kicks in, sometimes that tends to lead to cooler and wetter here in the UK, Ireland, and Western Europe for the, the summertime, especially mid and late uh, season. But it depends on how quickly the atmosphere responds, how quickly does those waters cool, how quickly does the SOI respond to those waters. These are all big questions that need to be answered, and it will only be over the next few months here. So the, this is all part of the summer forecast that I'm building. What kind of response, if any, will this have on our upcoming summer season that is going to be the the fundamental question here but it does look as if if you look at the nm nmme model you see here by the time we reach september uh, we do have a, a fully fledged la nina in place look at how warm the atlantic still is by then as well and i would fully expect to see a very active period as well within the tropical atlantic and also what response does the tropics have on our weather as well that has to get built into the summer forecast also is you've got uh, tropical systems if they happen to continue progressing westwards through the caribbean into the gulf hitting the southeast or eastern united states if they happen to recurve the stronger those systems are as they develop over the atlantic the quicker they may start to feel the steering winds in the upper levels of the atmosphere, and that tends to allow them to recurve any kind of energy, warm core systems running around the, the, the western flank of either the Azores High or the Bermuda High, depends on which one is strongest. You tend to find that the Azores High hands off to a stronger Bermuda High as the second half of the season progresses. And then what influence does that have on our atmosphere? We can have direct impacts by these systems becoming ex extra tropical and then they become areas of low pressure. Katia in 2011, for example, really stands out in my mind. Very deep area of low pressure, broad damaging winds, 80 plus mile per hour winds, heavy rainfall. We had almost, not quite, but almost tropical uh, storm conditions here in the UK. We also can have these systems running northwards, drives a stronger area of high pressure and actually can deliver heat wave conditions also, especially August and September for the UK and Ireland as well. So these are all things I'm looking at and just trying to join the dots together with regards to the upcoming forecast, which will be released a week on Sunday and it will be delivered on the live stream 26th of May at around 4pm. So I hope you can join me for that. And that is a good reason to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already done so and you're interested in learning about the big picture. This is an interesting tweet, by the way, by World Climate Service talking about the Indian Ocean Dipole. The latest Copernicus ECM WF models still show a significantly positive Indian Ocean Dipole in the months ahead, although they've backed off a bit from the last month or so here. So it looks as if we could see uh, a positive IOD uh, as we progress through the course of the summer season again what influence does that have on our weather looking at the cfs uh, or should i say the cdas 0.5 data this is the european temperature anomaly for the first 14 days of the month we're pretty much bang on the middle of the month now and we're only two weeks away from the middle uh, for the beginning of the summer which is pretty amazing look at how cold western russia is we've got almost winter conditions here in parts of western russia Whereas here in the UK and Ireland, we've almost got summer-like weather. So this is very much a tale of two halves, summer in the West versus late winter in the east of the continent. Now, the MJO is, is something that's quite interesting at the moment. It's rotated back into the uh, phases, uh, weak phases of one, two. But notice here that the GFS is indicating it going back through phases two, three, and possibly becoming a little bit more amplified 
in phase four and five. Now, I personally believe that uh, we have seen a phase four and five pattern that delivered the very warm weekend just gone. Now, we've also seen some very warm conditions over the eastern United States. Let's have a look at that and see what I'm showing. So this is Europe. So you've got the warm western half of the European continent. This is the United States for the same period. As you can see here, uh, a warm east, cold west. You tend to find with a phase four or five MJO, region in the eastern half of uh, North America, region in the western side of Europe here. It delivers a warm pattern in the winter season, but it can also deliver a warm pattern in the summer season as well. Now, the Arctic Oscillation went from negative to strong positive. We're in strong positive at the moment. Hence, the this is basically the response to the last phase four or five of the MJO. Now, it's expected to go into negative and then go back to neutral, which is quite interesting. Let's have a look at the North Atlantic Oscillation and see what it's showing. So why would it be going into negative territory? Well, it went from phase four and five back through into the no phase, which then means that we have more of a, a shift in the upper air pattern. It's the same with the NAO as it was with the Arctic Oscillation. You go from weak negative to firm positive, then back to negative once again. So we're in a, a positive Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation pattern at the moment. But given what we are seeing with the MJO expected and is, should I say, in the favourable phases for more blocking once again. So we'll, you see the back and forth pattern and you can relate that back to the MJO. We were in phase four and five. We went into the no phase. We went into a pattern that would deliver going from positive Arctic Oscillation, North Atlantic Oscillation to negative. That's what we're going to see at the moment. And then it'll be interesting to see what my hunch is, what, my, the, what I'm trying to get at is the fact that I think if it goes back into phase four and five, we're going back to the pattern that we've just seen just over the weekend there. Now we've got low pressure in control of our pattern at the moment here, but I've, I've said and highlighted for, for several days now that I think we go from high pressure to low pressure back to high pressure towards the end of this month. And uh, if you happen to look at the, uh, the, the 500 millibar geopotential height anomaly pattern, this is off the GFS, and this is a one operational run. So obviously, this is not an ensemble. You have to kind of take this somewhat with a pinch of salt. But you notice here that we have got quite a lot of area of high pressure with a low stuck in between. Now, that system uh, that we've got at the moment controlling our weather, essentially that was uh, driven across the Atlantic with the jet. Then it weakened. Then it became detached from the main flow. So it's kind of stuck in place locked in between this high over this, the mid-Atlantic and the high over Scandinavia. Watch what happens. Given what I've just showed you with regards to the NAO and the AO expected to go back negative, watch where the high goes. It then builds in place, forces this low to become and remain trapped underneath. So we then have lower pressure underneath higher pressure. That's an unsettled pattern across Iberia, France, much of the continent. You've got that big, strong Scandinavian high bridging with the high over the mid-Atlantic here. So it's very much high over low. But watch what happens as we continue to play through the next uh, several frames here. That area of high pressure then gets shifted up towards Iceland and Greenland here. We do have lower pressure getting forced across Europe. But notice here that area of high pressure becomes almost a continuation of the Azores high hooking up with the Greenland high and Iceland high, but it's also encompassing the UK pattern as well. And continue to play through these frames and you see that um, the area of low pressure tries to kind of pinball back towards the UK once again here. But I personally believe we go from low pressure now back to higher pressure, um, you know, possibly towards the final week of the month here. So we'll wait and see what happens, but certainly... Uh, there is there's plenty of things uh, going on at this moment in time. Finally, let's have a look at the overview chart of the same model here, the GFS. And we've got that area of low pressure stuck in between the high over the Atlantic and high over Scandinavia, as you can see here. So it's got nowhere really to go, but it's also 
the center of the low is to the southwest means that we've got that warmer more humid flow coming up from the east of that center we're going to have showers and thunderstorms blowing up day by day here and then i think what will happen is we are going to start to lose some of that the that the influence of the low pressure as we move towards the upcoming weekend here i think what we're going to see is that high becoming a little bit more established over the country creates a little bit of a seal within the mid levels of the atmosphere stops the convective process developing as the daytime heating kicks in once you start to cap the atmosphere by raising the heights in the mid levels you then start to shut down the upward motion within the atmosphere shuts down the sharp production as well and uh, we should see a, a bit of a quieter pattern through the course of the weekend and then as we move into next week it all is to play for still a lot of uncertainty with regards to next week anyway so yeah i think i've spoken plenty um and uh, I'll, I'll i'll cut for today there hope you enjoyed today's video let me know in the comment section below what you think of today's content hit that like button share with your friends and family and subscribe i do greatly appreciate it upcoming weekend we have got plenty to, uh, to look forward to weather talk episode three um will be available on saturday we've got the live stream this upcoming sunday as always and remember the summer forecast will be released a week on sunday the 26th of may will be the release date of the summer forecast so stay tuned for that as well see you again next time with more bye for now